Hello, and uh, thank you, uh, candidates in Hillsborough Beach, uh, for joining us. I'm Steve Bosque, the opinion editor. Dan Sweeney is here, deputy opinion editor. Uh, such a, a jewel of a community there and such great history. Uh, you, I'm going to start with you, Barbara Baldessari. Uh, you, you almost wonder how Hillsborough Beach ended up being in Broward County <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> It, I, I think it's probably the most beautiful site in Broward County. And this past, well, the past several years since I've been on the commission, I've been the representative, the town representative for the Broward League of Cities. So it gives me an opportunity to travel around Broward County for our monthly meetings. And I have to say, I haven't seen anything that matches Hillsborough Beach. Okay. You said in your questionnaire that the you listed as the most serious issue in the community, preventing road flooding. So tell us a little bit about what's the problem and what's being done. You're referring to A1A, I, I assume. A, right? Well, A1A is our only road and it's a state road. So uh, we've been working on it for years, trying to get the state to do something positive with the road. Um, and it, it got exacerbated the past few years during keen tides. Um, and what would happen is you would be on your way home from the grocery store and all of a sudden you couldn't get home and would have to go back up through um, Route 1 to try to get home through um, Deerfield Beach. So they've been, uh, they put together a plan and the uh, town has been working with the state over the past few years to actually raise the road at the south end of town. But there were some other things that were going to happen with the road raising, and that included uh, sidewalks from the in the north end of town and bike lanes for the whole length of the property of the um, A1A uh, road. When they started out, the plan was to really raise the road about six inches. And when you saw the King Tides and when Broward County Resiliency Group was working on it, the, it was obvious the six inches was not going to do it. So since they started looking at the project, we've gone from raising it from six inches to almost two feet down in the south end of town. Um, that project has already been, the, the actual base has already been laid and I think most of the macadam is down now. So um it made a difference i mean just the most recent rainfalls that we've had um uh, i did i didn't really see any water that was laying on the road now i don't think we've had maybe we've had one king tide since then and i don't think the road flooded at this point so the project should be finished somewhere around august of this okay. year i think they're ahead of schedule a bit but that's what's going on right now with the road all right uh I want to turn to Rich uh, Crusco. Rich, uh, you said in your questionnaire that um, uh, land development and overdevelopment uh, is a major concern and that you've been leading the fight against a 110 foot uh, variance that could allow a skyscraper in Hillsborough Beach. Tell us yeah. about that issue. Sure, um, Steve. So when we first moved here, um, getting to know the landscape, getting to know the neighbors, um, this the sale of this parcel which is two lots down from where i live but it abuts the uh, friends of ours who had told us about it and what potentially is going to happen because being new to the beach uh, although we're not new to florida we own properties up in delray but being new to the beach area understanding the impacts that something like this can have uh, especially in a zone that is zoned for 35 feet uh, seemed to resonate with a lot of people. So I um, I attended some of the quasi-judicial hearings trying to get up to speed on what is actually going to be taking place here in this small town with a 110-foot variance that's in a zone that's zoned for 35 feet. So what became apparent was that um, if this that once this building was approved, and there was an outcry from some of my some of my friends. We decided to file a lawsuit and stop the um, mechanism, if you will, so that maybe we can sit down and have a conversation with the commission and the developer to try to get to a better point. Because being a business leader as I've been, um, 
you know, there comes a point in time when negotiations always should be taking place. If there are so many residents opposed to something, uh, then maybe it shouldn't be jammed down their throat. So, and unfortunately that just didn't happen. The commission never embraced some of the residents. I believe there was over 90 uh, residents that testified at the judicial hearings opposing uh, such a development because what it's going to do is it's going to open the floodgates to other developers to come in and potentially do the same thing. So in seeing all of this and witnessing some of this, I, um, I came down here and I re when I retired and subsequently, uh, you know, due to the uh, decisions that, that were made by the commission, um, we um, followed through on the lawsuit and a potentially um, hopefully going to get uh, a positive result to thwart the attempt to allow a 110 foot variance uh, in this particular area. Okay. Barbara, did you vote for that variance? I certainly did. Um, and it was, I have to tell you, there was much, much thought that went into uh, that vote. And what I tried to do was think of what was best for the town. Um, there was, we were, we were able to actually negotiate, you know, there's a, a, there's a piece of that property that's not developable. There's 25, there's, um, I think it's 25% of that property you cannot develop. Um, so staying with the zoning that we would have had, you have, what well, you have um, oceanfront property and the first two floors, if you stayed at the three story level, the the first two floors would have no ocean view because of the development and the the preserve space that's back there. The other thing is we it would have been eligible to have 188 units on it. And we were concerned about the traffic and the people and the numbers and things like that. So we were able to get them to get down to 100 units total, which is almost what 45 percent, I guess, of capacity. Um, the setbacks that the setbacks that were allowed had been almost doubled. Um, so we, I think we did the best that we could in negotiating for the town. You know, that property has been vacant for a long time. We've been missing tax dollars on it because, you know, you don't get the same tax dollars for vacant land. Um, we have beach issues coming up and we need to replace the sand on the beach. The additional tax dollars would give us some opportunity at this point to save some money so we could use it for sand and repl beach replacement, re renourishment in the future. So there's a whole bunch of things that we took into consideration. And I must say, it was not an easy decision. We, you know, you always have some people that are opposed and you always have uh, people that are, are for it. And I think I made the best decision that I could with the information that I had. Okay. And I uh, have no, per I have no personal agenda. Okay. I have no personal interest in, you know, the supporting the uh, construction people or whatever. I mean, it, this was just my feeling what was best for the town. All right. Let me, uh, uh, let's continue the questioning with my colleague, Dan Sweeney. Uh, sure. Um, Ms. Bal Baldessari, you, you put that when we, uh, when you, uh, I want to ask about something, it's coming, you kind of just said, because you also mentioned something like it in the questionnaire, when we asked why should voters elect you instead of your opponent, you started off with, and in bold, I have no personal hidden agenda. What is that in reference to? Well, it's it's obvious. I mean, I'm not a. I'm looking at the town as a whole and the many issues that we face. I'm not looking at one piece as Mr. Crusco is. I think right now his agenda is to, you know, knock out the uh, building that that we've approved, the variance that we've approved. And I don't have that kind of agenda. I'm doing what I think is best for the whole town. And it's not a personal thing. It doesn't affect me personally. Well, I mean, I, I, I would certainly say that Mr. Mr. Crusco's agenda is not hidden. I mean, he, he's, well, he's, pretty, he's pretty out and loud Thank about you. it. Thank you for that. Well, uh, and it's but, not like but, we're against but, building. We're just building with egregious abuse of zoning laws. That's all. Sorry, Dan. Uh, did, uh, 
do you feel that there is some some sort of hidden a, agenda at work in any of the campaigns that uh, of, of of your three opponents, or do are you just do you just object more to to someone who's kind of you see as a single issue candidate? I think it's the single issue candidate. I think when you're on the commission, you have to be able to look at the whole picture and not just one piece. Uh, okay, uh, uh, Mr. Cruz, I want to give you a chance to to, to respond to sure. that. Sure. The town and the developer had an opportunity during the hearings to present to the town um, and to the residents other options available. Because what Mr. Ba what Ms. Baldessari is referencing is um, that in order for it to have been built on a 35 foot zone, um, we would not have had X amount of tax dollars, et cetera, et cetera. But we were never given that opportunity. We were never given that opportunity to look at, well, what else is available? They first came at us with 15 stories. Now you have to keep in mind, it's really about feet. It's not about stories anymore, because uh, I'm learning a lot about this over the last year and a half about building on the beach here in uh, South Florida. So at that point, when the commission didn't want to sit down with us and um, the developer actually sat down with us to try to mediate this because all of us are reasonable people um, in terms of understanding development, understanding what towns need, particularly small towns such as this, that, that these types of issues resonate dramatically. So the fact that we weren't given that opportunity with the commission really showed us that if they're really trying to do what's in the best interest of the town, it should be for the people that live here. There was over 90 people that testified and there was only three people that testified for it. So if there was so much um, uh, uh, recognition for this particular variance and if the people really wanted it, they would have come out. But again, it's really about a lost opportunity for the commission to come to us and to say, hey, Here's what we're looking at. Here's why we're looking at it. Um, and if you attended those judicial hearings, you would have seen that. And in and terms of some of the beach nourishment and all of those things, quite frankly, uh, those of us that are here and have been through a couple of the beach nourishments, and I probably haven't been here for as many as Ms. Baldessier has been, but I've been here for the last one. It didn't work well. Um, and what I what I plan on doing, and I'm not a single agenda driven candidate. I've never been in politics before, but I am a passionate human being. And at this point, when I see um, injustices such as this, if Ms. Baldessier wants to consider it a single agenda, well, I'm going to sit on the sword because to me, it represents so much of what this town has been about over the last 20 or 30 years. There's a reason there hasn't been any other commissions allowing buildings such as this. And Ms. Baldessier was part of other commissions that had plans put in front of them that they've turned down. I don't want to get into specifics, okay. but ultimately, ultimately, there's a, enough people that I've been in contact with in the two years that I'm here to tell me, Richard, please help us and let, let's try to fight this. Okay, I, I, I want to give I want to bring the other two candidates into this. Uh, uh, but but Ms. Baldessari, if you could just very quickly respond to when he specifically called your name out and said that there have been other options to do this over the years and that they've been turned down. You've been on the the the, the council for a while. Uh, do you recall anything like that in the no, last few years? No, I don't. I th there were times prior to my tenure where uh, there were proposals for uh, doing things with the property, but they were not considered as far as I know, by the other commissions, I was not involved in discussions as far as I can remember with anything other than this. Okay. This uh, uh, Mr. Adriano, if you, uh, if you could, uh, well, first off, if you could weigh in on what they've been discussing and, and where exactly you stand on, uh, on a zoning change to, to build a, a larger building on what was zoned for, I guess, a 35 foot height. Um, and also what you see as the top issues in the campaign. Uh, yeah. Um, one thing that um, Rich mentioned was that um, this is an unusual thing. Uh, we actually have, um, let's see, the town has a building that's eight stories high, another one nine stories, 10, 15, another one 10, and another 11. 
and one 15 stories. So it's not an anomaly. And another thing is that um, I was at the meetings as well. And when they mentioned 15 stories, the 90 people that he mentioned all opposed, including myself. But then lots of conversation, lots of it. And um, they got it down to 10 stories. And uh, people seemed to be OK with it. And but then even more discussion. They had meetings at, at the town hall. And right, Barbara, you were. Uh, yes, yes. And so uh, many people had an opportunity to speak and to put their input. And and and, and the thing is that um, this is uh, this company is called Related Group. It's one of the best groups, uh, best builders that, that we know about anyway. It's not one of these uh, builders that is going to start building and then you know run out of funds. This is a uh, top flight. Now, the other thing about this variance is that um, if without the variance, it would have covered an entire 585 feet across A1A. And it would have just been a, a sheet of concrete. That's it. Well, they wouldn't have had uh, the option to do all the things they're doing. And there's, there's more to explain about the building, why we like it, and how it, how important it is to the town. Number one thing is that um, we never had a reserve. And so this uh, the building will supply about a million dollars a year. And Hillsborough Beach's entire budget is five million. So now we'll have a reserve, which we can use for anything we need. A lot of times we need sand and we really don't have the money. We have to get loans. This is an opportunity. And we've been working with the town of um, Deerfield Beach and Boca Raton. And we're getting sand, by the way. So everything's going fine. Getting this big pipe come from Boca to Deerfield, then from Deerfield all the way down into our north end. Um, but so everything's going good there. But the point is that we never always got along very well with Deerfield. And so the, and we, the only way we can get on a beach was getting permission from Deerfield to come from Deerfield all the way through. And sometimes it was a lot of protesting involved by Deerfield. Here's the thing, though. This building, these builders are providing a 25-foot access, and it's ours. We could use it anytime we want for renourishment or for the police to get out there quickly. We didn't have that. The police had to go all the way down to South Point to get all the way around to get. This is a beautiful spot for them to enter our, our beach in case of an emergency. Also, fire rescue. Okay, uh, so, can can you uh, also say kind of what you see as the 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 big issues in the in the town moving forward to kind of get to some other subject other than the the one you know the the, the one plot though I'm sure it's a major issue in a town this size. Sure. Uh, what, what, what else do you see as as going to be uh, something that that's that's the next town town council is really going to have to to struggle with? Well, I wouldn't call it a struggle because mm -hmm. I've been to meetings. I'm, I'm not on the board, but I go to the meetings, not all of them, but plenty. And um, uh, one of the great things that's most likely going to happen when um, uh, we're getting uh, $4.5 million to help bury our power lines. That, that's a big thing because during a hurricane or, or a major storm, we could lose our power. Sometimes we have lost our power. I know Richard's been here two years. I've been here 10. And I know we have lost power. With burying the um, lines, that we can avoid that. And that's a big, big plus. Related that the, the related group is offering the $5 million, five point, uh, excuse me, $4.5 million. And that's one major issue. And the um, we have, basically, the town is running very smoothly we were fortunate to have a excellent mayor and a great commission of uh, several people leaving and that's why rich and uh dave and myself and barbara uh trying to you know form another committee uh, but mm -hmm. um because of that we don't really have a lot of issues currently on the agenda uh that was one of the main ones we always of course have to maintain our public safety and we have a great police chief so a lot of departments maybe have have issues but we don't we have a great department the people they hire are 
Excellent. And we want to maintain that. We want to maintain their vehicles and make sure they get plenty of training. Um, our department has training. They just finished some and they nonstop training of all aspects of police work. Okay. We have a good relationship with the county for our fire rescue. Um, so, and then we, of course, we have vehicles on the beach, ATVs that patrol the beach. And um, on the weekend, we see even more, more patrol. We have our boat. Uh, so all these things need to be maintained. We can't lose any of that by saying, oh, well, we don't need a boat. Why do we need a boat? You know, well, we do need a boat. And because sure. we got to make sure that the bait is safe. Okay. And um, so these are the kind of things. I, I know that I want to point out another thing is that I remember when we were getting, um, we had to dig a trench all along Hillsborough Beach to get new water pipes. And we got the new lines, new water lines. Then our list, our number came up on another list. New sewer lines. We got those, thanks to the mission and the mayor. New sewer lines. That's a big thing. I remember when they were digging, I was watching, and it was water coming out of when it was the water pipes. It was all rusty pipes, and water was like coming from everywhere. And I remember the water bill was so high, even when no one was here in the summer. Hmm. This is the reason why. So we got new water. And yet there were people complaining always people complaining about why are we digging these trenches again this and that and so there'll always be people complaining about something that's positive for the entire town and i believe that this is one of them this is one of those occasions this building is a plus by far we've never had anything so advantageous for the town and yeah. now we're getting sidewalks people now can walk their baby carriages instead of in the middle of the street on sidewalks we're getting bicycle paths instead of just a little path of about three feet. They're going to be like five feet wide. This is, and no more complaining about, oh, the bikes are so close. Well, I'm afraid I'm going to hit somebody. Those days are going to be over. And um, so there's so many other things I can talk about. But okay. Might have uh, I, I, I want to bring in Mr. Ravenessi too. Uh, um, Mr. Ravenessi, if, if you could, you know, address what appears to be kind of the the the, the one issue that's uh, at uh, a disagreement between a couple of these candidates and, and, and Mr. Crusco. Uh, where do you stand on the uh, the zoning uh, change to get a 110 foot uh, new uh, building in Hillsborough Beach? It's and 150 also feet, Dan. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but it's a 110 foot variance, which would make the building 150 feet plus. Okay. 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 So w where do you stand on this variance, uh, Mr. Rivenetti? And uh, and also introduce yourselves a little to us because we didn't get a questionnaire from you. So uh, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're running as well. Sure. Um, I spent 25 years in politics in Massachusetts as an elected and appointed official. I did six years as a local ward city councilor, 15 years as a alderman in a city of about 45,000. I was there for 15 years doing that. 15 years as licensed committee chairman, uh, which handle all businesses coming into the city without, uh, with the exclusion of liquor. Uh, I also was a director of public works for three years and a mayor's aide for two years. So that's my political background. <clears throat> I was a public relations, a regional director of public relations for uh, 9X, which became Verizon. I had 50 communities under my responsibility to know everybody in every town, uh, selectmen, town managers, etc. And so, and the problem solver for the phone company uh, when they had issues with either poor phone service or or whatever. Um, the majority of the, the people here who are running, like myself, uh, I believe uh, there are three opportunities to win. There's four of us running. Uh, I figured I'd throw my hat in because of my past experience. Uh, in campaigning, which I've been doing, I run into a lot of people who say, um, you know, what's your thoughts on this uh, on this 10-story building? So I, so I really had to go out and do some research. <clears throat> so I did. And the first thing I did was, uh, let me, and other people also, a matter of fact, Mr. Crisco and I met, and him and I had talked about this, and I indicated I, I, that I actually went around asking questions about how this came about. And I said, were, was it advertised in a newspaper that they were having this particular issue? Yes. Um, did they have a public hearing on it? Yes. And were there pros and cons? Yes. Did they request a variance um, with, after negotiating? Yes. And did they improve on whatever the town regulations were at the time? Yes. Matter of fact, they doubled them to become more compatible with their request. Um, I said then, and then after that variance was granted, did it go before the full board? Yes. So I said, 
and at the time I had no interest in it because it doesn't affect me. Uh, but now as I'm running, people are asking me about it. So I have to go ahead and do some research on it. They, it seems like the town uh, with the town manager, the mayor and the commission followed all the protocols relative to getting this done legally, um, you know, without any, uh, any wrongdoing on the, the administration part or the commission's part. If they followed all the rules and regulations uh, and they did all those things, advertising and public hearings, et cetera, then they followed the rules. Now, uh, in terms of what I, what I listened to, one of the, the gentlemen said that uh, they're afraid that this might happen again in the future. Well, I checked into that too. On January 10th, um, the ordinance was passed by the commission preventing this from happening because I only have a 200 foot uh, frontage, and I don't think any developer will come in. I don't think there's any properties available uh, in De uh, in Hillsborough Beach that has a 200 foot uh, 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 frontage uh, available. So, in fact, what I think what the town did learn is the fact that where this is such a uh, uh, a big issue, they instituted a new ordinance preventing this assembly. They call it an assembly, where you can add. Want you, you know, I want to buy one lot, I'll buy another lot, then I'll buy a third lot, and, and then I'll build these, these large uh, buildings. So then I inquired as to how it's going to benefit the, the, the city. Well, uh, four and a half million dollars is going to give us the, uh, and I'm not trying to be repetitive, but I'm just, you know, going by what I, or what I did in the research for the underground uh, of all the plants. We call it plants when I'm like director of public works. The plant would be the, uh, the, uh, the cable lines, the, the police lines, all of those, you know, the electric lines. <clears throat> and um, so that's a positive. Also, the the three to five million dollar condos, uh, it's going to bring in a million dollars worth of revenue is absolutely right. That's what Mr. Andriano said. Absolutely correct. That's what they estimate a million dollars. It could be more. I don't know. Um, according to the builders, um, and at, I was asking about them and their reputation, et cetera. Um, and they, they, you know, they seem to have agreed because the of what they were, or, you know, were looking for is it's in their best interest to go along with the town's request. They're going to get rid of this hundred foot yacht uh, uh, dock that's been there for years and years, and, and this land is not, uh, uh, it's just been idle for decades. So it's going to bring in a uh, you know revenue, uh, like I say, like a million dollars a year. So I would say it's good for the town. It may be bad for some of the people who, who may live near there and have their view obstructed. I can understand that. Uh, but as an elected official, uh, I think the town, uh, in and of itself, the the the, uh, I, I, the commission is like we're thinking how it's going to benefit the town, uh, as opposed to in my case where I live, um, I had a clear of the I, I face the intercoastal uh, of all the way down south on the intercoastal, and okay. they built a four-story condominium next to me, and I, I understood I. I understand other people who are about that property field, but I think that the town went ahead and did everything that needed to be done in the best interest of the town. And years ago, I remember living here. I'm here 35 years. I've lived here full time 15. There's been a lot of animus between a lot of the past commissions who would who was, who was fighting against who. And now I've noticed. That there seems to be some cohesion with the group in office, and, and I think that's a good thing for the town. I've got a quick follow-up question here on this. First of all, Dave, uh, thank you very much for that that cogent explanation. We would like to endorse you. Uh, we probably can't endorse you without seeing the having the benefit of a candidate questionnaire. The other three candidates sure. have all submitted one, so I would redouble my efforts to ask you to send yours into. Oh, I have no problem with that. I just didn't receive it. I would have done it. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, I enjoy hearing those stories about Everett, Massachusetts. Um, yeah. I'm just going by what the renderings look like that I see online for the, the this project, which is known as the Enclave, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, I got to tell you, and, and and maybe I'm betraying the Sun Sentinel's uh, opinion uh, position about controlled development. The the renderings look like a slice of downtown Fort Lauderdale stuck on Hillsborough Beach. I know it's only about 15 or 11 or 12, 15 stories, but Compared to the rest of the small scale look of the community, it really stands out. Uh, Vinny, can you see what I'm describing? Well, actually, from that point on, most of the buildings are high rises. The low rises are 
to the north end of that. Uh, as a matter of fact, Rich's, Rich's uh, uh, residence is north of that by two lots. And so I can see him having a concern. It doesn't really take away too much of a view because he still has a view of north and south. There wasn't much to see on the other side anyway. But the point is that um, the um, there are there are buildings. Now, by the way, you mentioned eleven. It's only ten stories we're talking about. They asked one hundred and fifty feet. They're getting ten feet, not stories. Okay. So now, um, but hold when you go to the north, when Vinny, you go, hold on, Vinny, hold on just yeah. one second. I, yeah. let, let's go over this for one, Mr. Crusco. Uh, I, I see what you're saying. I really think that most people, most people, you know, uh, I don't think know how big 150 feet is, but everybody knows what a 10 story building looks like. So why, yeah. why, why the obsession on feet and not stories? It's interesting that uh, Mr. Andriano talks about the buildings next to it. Um, and, you know, we were thinking if, the, if they would have come to us and said that maybe they wanted to do that an 80 foot building, we might have had some way to compromise this, so to speak. But um, the reason that I'm mentioning feet is because our attorney, who's a, a land, uh, the uh, city of Naples attorney, uh, town attorney, has provided us with a lot of guidance on what to expect from developers, such as um, uh, the related group and others that have that uh, prestige of being uh, very good developers. Um, they don't build to the stories, they build to feet. And if and to us, if you're looking at three, four, five million dollar units, you're not looking at eight foot ceilings. You're looking at much more than that. So ultimately, when they're talking about the pool and you're talking about the mechanicals that are going to be up way up in the sky, shading all of the areas, not only in Hillsborough Beach, but also Deerfield Beach, because I've heard from a number of people across the intercoastal that want to support me, even though they don't live in this town. So I think that's really important, really important to understand that in a zone that's 35 feet to go 150 feet plus mechanicals. And, and the reality is, uh, Steve, we don't even have renderings that I think we could rely on. And that was one of the things that was um, that came up was that the renderings that were given and were approved, even the site plan approval. Um, there were so many inaccuracies, if you want. I don't want to get into specifics here. But ultimately, um, that building okay. will stick out like a sore thumb. Okay, T tell us quickly. Tell us the name of that attorney, that town of Naples attorney. Who's His name is Ralph Brooks, R-A-L-F-B-R-O-O-K-S. And you've got, Mr. Brooks has filed an action, a civil action in Broward Circuit Court on this project, right? Yes, it's in Circuit Court, and it's been there for quite a while now. Okay, I'm going to switch gears. I've got a question for you, Barbara. I'm, I'm citing an article I read in the New Pelican newspaper that the town of Hillsborough Beach hired a lobbying firm for called Capital City Consulting for $5,000 a month, it appears, to help the town get state and federal grant money for uh, for beach renourishment and other things? We want someone to monitor. We want it to some, someone to monitor what's out there so we don't lose any opportunities to get grant money when it's available. I understand that this is government money. You've got very capable people uh, looking out for the town's interests in Tallahassee and Washington. Why do the taxpayers in Hillsborough Beach need to spend 5000 a month on a lobbyist? Good question. Well, there's uh, I, I, Hillsborough Beach, because it's a private beach, has difficulty becoming eligible for, for grant funds. And that was, we, we wanted to make sure that if there was anything out there that gave us an opportunity to get funds, and this is really to help protect the beach and, and uh, get funds for the sand. Okay. And I'm it's curious an, to know. It's actually an investment. It's an investment in our future. Okay. Is it more on the state side or more on the federal side, the money? More on the, I'm sorry. Is it more? Is your desire to get funding for this for this beach renourishment or other work you need? Is it more from the state or more from the feds? Well, I think you need to look at everything because there's funds available sometimes from the feds with storms. There's funds available from the state at different times. 
Um, we get very little support actually from Broward County. Um, and, you know, we, we need to monitor wherever funds are available and make sure that there's nothing that's being done to, to prevent us and our residents from getting grant opportunities. Okay, and, and just lastly on this, it's not a huge amount of money, but it did get, it get, get you've got a small budget that got my attention. Why this lobbying firm? A lot of company, did you advertise for this work? As far as I know, we did. Uh, the town manager could respond to that, but you know, we, we keep everything that we try to keep, well, we, we try to do everything that's legal and above board. And I, I'm not aware that um, he did not advertise. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna turn the microphone back to my colleague, Dan Sweeney. For sure. Okay. Uh, um, Ms. Bald Baldessari, you said uh, in, your, in your questionnaire that there have, been, uh, there have been major equipment purchases for the police department without using taxpayer dollars. Um, right. Can you explain that a little bit to me? Is that like a, a f the federal grants for? Um, you know? No, we actually get forfeiture funds. We have um, a person on our police force that is part of the um, drug enforcement agency. And when he participates in the drug enforcement that's going on and they get uh when they're able to capture drugs or find drugs, we get forfeiture funds from that. And that is being able to be used for the police department and some of the equipment and supplies that they need. We've received several million dollars since we've started participating in this program. Um, and they've been able to what, buy- What's that gone to? Oh, sorry, you're, but you're just about to answer that. I said, what has that gone to? And it sounded like you were just about to answer that very question. Yeah. Uh, They've gotten uh, body cameras. They've gotten different equipment for the car, uh, the police car. Um, I think some of this, the uh, they're looking at new uh, equipment for the um, a call station inside the police department. There are certain rules related to what it can be used for. It has to be police for the police. And uh, it's also used for police education and training. So there's a whole bunch of things that they've been able to purchase. Jay probably could provide you with the list, but every time we're going to authorize the use of forfeiture funds, it does come before the commission and we have to approve it. Okay. Um, Mr. Crusco, as part of uh, our uh, uh, endorsement process, we do we do some pretty extensive background work on on all of our, uh, all the potential candidates, um, including, uh, uh, voting history and uh, registration to vote and everything. You've only voted in Broward in 2022. Is that right? Uh, no, I voted in 21. I voted for my uh, friend Manny, who was running in the municipal election here. That was my first. Uh, okay. That was my the first. Twenty twenty-one Mooney might have fallen through, fallen through my cracks. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's okay. Uh, I, uh, but, mm -hmm. Can you can you tell me like uh, uh, where were you voting before that and why why the the recent registration here? Well, I was in New York. I was voting in New York. And um, when I first was becoming a, a homesteaded resident here, we signed up immediately uh, when we got a driver's license because I wanted to be uh, registered here to vote. I, um, I started to learn when we were renting here, when we were first understanding what Hillsborough Beach is all about. Uh, I wanted to be part of the vote because the city commissions here are very, very important. The municipal elections were so much more important here than they were back in New York. And so I wanted to be part of some of that and make sure that um, that we were able to to uh, to vote um, whenever possible. Yeah, I, 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 I certainly say the, the same thing all the time whenever any of my friends that 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 vote but uh, don't pay too close enough attention to municipal elections and they're ranting and raving about what's happening in the White House or in Congress, I, I tell them, you know, those people don't decide when your garbage gets picked up. Yeah, well, I retired here and I thought I was going to be able to to kind of take it easy and relax and maybe enjoy politics from a from a distance, especially in a small town. But uh, there seems to be a bunch of things polarizing here. So being a passionate uh, person, I um, I wanted I, to get involved. I, I've got a question for Richard as well, Dan, if that's OK. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, well, it's a common sense question that I think any taxpayer or voter would ask. And I've been thinking about it. Uh, as a private citizen, 
you are a plaintiff in a lawsuit against the town of Hillsborough Beach. If you're elected on March 14th, you become a town commissioner in Hillsborough Beach, and you become, I think, de facto, a, a defendant in that same suit. So if you win the election, which side of that lawsuit are you going to be on? Well, I'll never, I'll always be on the side of the lawsuit, but you have to understand, Steve, I'm not suing the commission. I'm suing the 110 foot variance that they provided to a builder. So, you know, and that's a very good point because there's so many people that we've spoken to in this town that are so uninformed about what is actually going on here with this lawsuit. So, and again, I don't want to take up all the time discussing the nuances with, with how I've been misrepresented here uh, and what I'm suing, okay. but I will I will always be on the side of my people that supported me, that have provided funding for this lawsuit, and that will never change. Now, if I have to recuse myself for whatever decisions are made based on this particular development, that's the law, and that's fine. But when it comes to other development and other decisions, again, it's not only about land development, it's about public safety, it's about the beach nourishment and things like that. What I'm finding is I don't think our town has enough relationships with the other towns being Boca, Deerfield, et cetera, Lighthouse Point. This is what I'm finding. So okay. I could provide some of that better than we've already had we have to hire lobbyists i mean this should be done here we got a small town 1700 residents of which 1200 voted in the last election right so, okay you know to me people don't even know about the vote by mail they don't even know because i've been to their home so right let, let me inter let me interject quickly and, and i haven't looked at the litigation but i will if, if you're not suing the town in the lawsuit <clears throat> excuse me who's the defendant uh, the town commission and okay. the developer what what i'm getting at is this and i don't want to belabor it either and I, I appreciate the patience and the of the other of the other candidates but let's say it's very normal in the litigation like this that somebody at the town suggests after the election you know what we need to hire a leap some expert witnesses to defend the town in this litigation and those expert witnesses charge a thousand dollars an hour and on and on and on i mean you're gonna you're gonna vote if in the town's interest to hire expert witnesses to debunk the claims made in your lawsuit? Well, Steve, of course I wouldn't be able to vote on that. They're not okay. gonna I'm right. gonna have to be recused on that, right? Okay. Because I have a I have a sword still I'm holding here. But ultimately, you know, I'm looking for them to come sit down with us. And that's what I would say. Let's sit down with the people. There's a lot of people. If you want to do referendum, if you want to do other types of things, what does the town really want? That's all we're really looking for. What does the town want? Okay. Um, I want to ask a question of briefly of Dave Ravadisi. Uh, and it's something that Barbara Baldessari said a minute ago, and I jotted it down. Barbara said, and I, in the context of, I think, about beach access and money for beach renourishment and so forth, Bar Barbara said, and I quote, we get very little support from Broward County. Correct, Barbara? Yes. I want to ask Dave Ravanisi to to basically uh, expand on that, and I want Dave Rav. I'm going to Dave. I know you put you put your name in for one of the commission vacancies, but we're not successful. But um, what's the describe for us? What's the relationship like, partner to partner between the town and Broward County? To be honest with you, I have not been involved with the town activity um, until recently. And as far as their relationship with Broward County, uh, I don't think I'm qualified to to uh, like to make that judgment because I don't know the relationship between uh, people in Broward County and the city and the town of Hillsborough Beach. Uh, okay, I would I would just be talking uh, without any basic knowledge uh, of what kind of relationship they've had or had. Okay, fair enough. Vinny, same question to you, sir. What's the relationship like between the town and the county? Well, from what I gather, it, it's not one of animosity. It's just that we haven't qualified for certain things, certain funds. Um, so the requirements are just not there. Like we're, we're not a public beach. So a lot of funding that Deerfield gets and Boca and Pompano, they have public beaches. We don't. So it's not that they don't want to give us something. So it's not like the relationship, uh, because I know that when people, I've seen conversations where people, from uh, uh, went to meetings and both and you know with the county at their commission meetings, they, there are things that we ask for, and you could say, well, 
we're not getting it's not that we're not getting along it's that we don't qualify when we do qualify we'll get the funds barbara am i right or wrong well if if i may part of yes. the uh issue with broward county and the beach is that they supply funds based on uh, hotel tax and we don't really have hotels in town so we don't earn eligibility because of the fact that we don't have the hotels that the other towns have so that's one of the issues the other thing is we're trying mm -hmm. we would we'd like to have regional sand management and that was one of the advantages right now that we have because this is the first time that we will be getting sand from Boca because they're going to be doing dredging. They're dredging the Epshell, uh, and we're going to be able to participate and have the sand brought in. Up until now, we've not been able to do that. And it, to be able to work with Boca and Deerfield at the same time to get sand is a very positive thing because this way we don't even have to have a truck haul with the sand. You know, we can sh just have it shell, shell down. Yeah, Barbara, um, Barbara, Hillsborough Beach, like every other community in Broward, uh, is entitled to a share of the money from that big bond issue that the voters approved in 2018, which is mainly for transportation improvements, correct? Yes. Uh, do you have any idea what kind of yeah, money? That's the, the, that's the penny tax. And they, right. as far as I know, we get support for the shuttle from that, from the, the funds, our, our, our Hillsborough Beach shuttle. We have a shuttle that goes through the town on on uh, uh, every hour or something that it starts in the morning and people can stop the shuttle and ride it. Um, and that that comes from the transportation tax. So. OK. OK. Yep. Is the uh, this is more of an amusing question, but is the is the famous iconic Hillsborough Inlet Lighthouse, is that in the town of Hillsborough Beach? The lighthouse. The lighthouse. As far as I know, it's in Hillsborough Beach, but it's really, it, it's not our possession. Right. Okay, it's not our possession. Um, and we, we are not responsible for that land. Okay. Okay. State or the feds, or do you know? Um, I'm thinking because it, it's, uh, I want to say marine land, but. Okay, well, we'll, we'll check it. I, I have no, no reason for asking other than the fact that to me, who I first came to Broward in 1981, it's one of the most iconic images of Broward County. And we, really... all, take, we all take credit for it too. Pompano has it, uh, right. Lighthouse Point uses it as part of their advertising, and we certainly do use it. And I, I, must, I apologize because I thought I knew. <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, I mean, I, I do support their preservation society because I want us to be able to maintain it. If there's any last point, and I mean briefly, that uh, the other three candidates want to make about their candidacies or about this discussion, now's the time. I'll start with you, Vinny, if you want to say something. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Well, um, you said briefly. <laughs> yes. Yeah, this, right. is, well, this is not a this is not a town commission meeting. This is a sunset. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Well, um, my whole career has been in public service, and uh, I retired division chief, fire department of Miami Beach, and um, uh, prior to that, even when I was a kid. Everything was related to public safety, um, but I just want to continue to do so if I get elected. And I just have this feeling like I want to do more good. And I love people, and I love Hillsborough Beach, and I want to keep it in a pristine state. Um, I want to take care of it. I want to make sure we have the money that we need to take care of it. And. Um, make sure we don't have interference in any way when we want to make progress. And um, okay. Okay. That's, that's as brief as I can be. 
All right. Well, you, that was well said. Uh, Richard, you have the floor. Go ahead, sir. I, I learned something new uh, here as I'm learning all along the way that um, people consider things one agenda or a single agenda. So I'll have to keep that in mind. Um, well, my platform is uh, represent the interests and wishes of our residents, not outside parties. I wrote that to you in my questionnaire. Um, I also want to manage land development opportunities within current zoning laws. Not saying there's not room for compromise. There's always room for compromise. We just want that opportunity as residents. And we want to keep our residents safe and secure in their homes and communities. Obviously, fire rescue, EMS, 911 law enforcement is a top priority and should be. So on Tuesday, March 14th, Hillsborough Beach residents have an opportunity to vote for preserving the character and independence of our town. Or they can reelect the same commissioner who voted to upend our zoning laws. And in my opinion, cave to developers' wishes, which opens the door to other developers to come in and dramatically change the very life we've come to live here in Hillsborough. I stand with our citizens. All right, thank you. Barbara, he's obviously referencing you. Uh, I'm going to give you a minute or two to respond. Well, obviously, he's referencing me, and I uh, I stand with our citizens, too. And I have spoken to many citizens uh, prior to making that decision, and I say many, uh, many more than 90 that uh, Richard refers to. I think Mr. Cresco's whole platform is about trashing the project, and and the current commission with his baseless accusations all the time. Um, for the years, for many years, the town suffered with the commissioners uh, who spent more time complaining about one another rather than getting things done. And I think the commission for the past six years that I've been on it uh, has done a wonderful job in getting our infrastructure under control. We've been able to, as said, replace the water lines We've been able to replace the sewer. We've been able to get the road raised and elevated, and now we're working on the undergrounding. I would like the opportunity to continue for one more year. I'm eligible for one more year. Um, I have done what I felt was best for the town. I have received nothing in return other than satisfaction to know that I'm doing a good job for the people that I represent. So, All right. Thank you. Uh, but just a quick clarification, and Dave Ravidisi, you're on deck, sir. But when you said one more year, did you mean one more term? One more term. One more yeah. term. And the yes. terms are two years, right? Yes, they're two years. And I've done six years. And I have to tell you, it is stressful. It is yeah. stressful. And when I'm going through this, I'm thinking, why am I putting myself through this? Um, <laughs> so, right. But you know, there is much satisfaction when you feel like you can do something for the town, for the good of the town and the good of the people. And as I said on the on the day, as many times, especially when it came down to making decision about the variance. Right. What you know, I had many sleepless nights and I had to do what my heart told me was the best thing for the overall town and the majority of the people. Right. Okay, very good. Thank you. Dave Rabinetti, you have the last word, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Um well, this will be this will be if, if I get the privilege of serving. Um, uh, all I want to do is I'm concerned also about the the growth of the uh, you know like developers coming in. However, when I when I voiced that concern and I did some research, uh, the commissioners did on January 10th, I believe, of this year, uh, establish that ordinance that will prevent that overbuilding, which is good. And and I think Richard, you like that information because I know that's a big concern of yours. Uh, but on January 10th, uh, the ordinance was passed to stop the assembly. Uh, that's what they call it when you want to merge properties to to open up another 10-story, uh, you know, condominium project. Uh, so that, um, you know, that's something that I was concerned with. And now I'm satisfied with what the what the what the commission did, um, you know, with the mayor and the and the town manager because I had to go for uh, I have I have to ask somebody who knows in power. And I got all the information, and I was and I was pleased, and I was shown the the ordinance, and I'm and I'm and I'm thrilled because I live in a in a uh, poor community. Uh, I mean, uh, in Port Demir, which is there's four buildings, and we you know we're five and six stories max on on the ocean side, it's six on the intracoastal side, it's five. 
Um, and I have no obstructive view other than my south view, which as I, I'm not trying to beat a dead horse here because uh, the project next door uh, just blocked my view. But what am I going to do about that? Nothing because they did it the right way. So, you know, my concerns are I just want to be a participant uh, in the community where I live and be a positive force and work with the commissioners, the mayor and whoever the mayor is and the town manager. To just do what's right for the citizens of this community and what's good for us on a tax base, a public safety base. We have a great police department. Uh, we have a great police chief uh, involves us in everything. We have a lot of visibility. There's a lot of there's so many good things about Hillsborough Beach uh, that I have to recognize uh, that uh, it, it, it just I would be remiss if I didn't. Uh, I'm not saying that we don't need improvement somewhere, and I'm not familiar. Uh, uh, in, in fact, totally with what needs to be improved other than I'm, I'm trying to find out the more that I, that I traverse the, the three miles here and trying to meet people and explain my positions when they ask me questions. Um, I'm, 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 I'm in a learning process, so I don't have all the answers, uh, but certainly I, I give hundred percent on everything I do. Uh, I'm, I'm a former Marine. I follow through with what I, what people ask me to do. Okay. And uh, I give in my commitment. I'm committed. And I think I don't want to, take any more time up of you guys but uh that's about where i stand all right appreciate that thank you all four of you for being on with us here today and uh thank you uh, you all you all know your community and really care about your community it comes through loud and clear uh, there are going to be disagreements and, and legitimate uh respectful disagreements uh, on important things that's what democracy is all about so thanks so thank much you all for, yeah thank you all for being with us here today. thank, thank you for your thank time you. Hey, Dan, give me one second. I just received your questionnaire. Uh, I'll try filling it out and get it to you ASAP, okay? Thank you, sir. Great. Appreciate Thanks it. so much. Thank you. Thanks okay. to all. Bye.